Having a greenhouse is an incredible way to extend your harvests, to get additional growing space, to keep your crops safe from any and everything at once to eat it. However, it might not be the right thing for you, like a greenhouse wasn't the right thing for me. That's what this video is about, is this carport that was converted into a makeshift greenhouse to help me with certain things that I needed in my specific growing conditions. I'm gonna talk you through why I did it, how I did it, and take a look at some of the plants that are absolutely thriving. So before we get into the what we did and how I did it, let's touch on why I need this greenhouse, hothouse, warmer growing environment, whatever you want to call it. The best way for me to describe why I need something like this is to cover it by season. So if we start off with spring, the reason why I need an environment like this is to get a really, really early start to the growing season. Where I am here in Cape Town in South Africa, we have huge, huge problems with fruit flies. However, if you can get the fruit and vegetables that are known to get targeted by the fruit fly growing and fruiting as early as possible, then they develop the outer skins that become tough enough to withstand the sting of the, the fruit fly. It also gives you the opportunity to bag them and get them closed up and protected from the fruit fly before they're actually in the flowering stage. And if you've experienced a fruit fly, you'll know that even when they are tiny, tiny little fruits with not even open flowers on, they get stung. So that is for me the primary reason. Then the secondary reason is pest control. I'm sure you know all of that luscious new growth that comes out in spring is filled with nutrients and minerals and water and all of these good things that pests and bugs look for. Within this environment, it gives you a lot more control over the pests and bugs and diseases that, that, that fly around. So that is a big reason for me. And from a food point of view, the reason why I like this in spring is to get my berries going as early as possible. You've seen in the footage some of the berries that are they haven't even gone dormant. They are actively growing. They're getting little side shoots. Yeah, it's probably not the best thing because they need their rest. But what it's allowing is a really early start to the berry season. So I can harvest and enjoy these before the ones outside start, which just extends my berry harvesting season by that little bit extra, which if you grow in your own berries at home, you cannot wait for. Then if we look at summer, for me, a big reason is summer. Where I am, we have the Cape Doctor, which is also known as the Southeaster. And if you've heard of Cape Town, you've heard of the wind. It is currently absolutely pumping. We have a nice big winter storm on the go. And you can see these plants aren't moving. This behind me over here is a star fruit, very, very tropical fruit. And in winds, in summer, this thing would get absolutely decimated. So it allows me to grow things I would otherwise not be able to necessarily grow and then protect fragile crops. Even things like spinach that can get absolutely decimated in strong winds. Um, they can dehydrate very quickly because the evaporation from the leaves is quicker than what the roots, the roots can actually absorb. So wind protection is a huge one. The other one is limiting, and I know this sounds crazy, but limiting the amount of sun the plants are exposed to. In summer, the sun comes up at around 5.30 a.m. and it goes down at about 9 p.m. That is a long time for a plant to be exposed into the sun. Then you get the saying, which is, <laughs> which is very true if you're from anywhere else in the world and you've ever visited South Africa or Africa, is you get sun and then you get the African sun. The African sun is brutal. It is hot, it burns. So having a lot of plants exposed to direct sunlight for such a long time during the summer months really has puts its toll on them. So anything shaded, I have in the roof here 60% block out staggered in between zero. 
So you, it gives that little bit of break between the long days to let the plants rehydrate and just give them a little bit less exposure to those direct harsh rays from the sun. And then you get the season we're in now, which is autumn. And the primary reason for a converted greenhouse or traditional greenhouse like this is to extend the summer growing season. It allows you to grow things in a more controlled environment and give a little bit of an extended shelf life to reduce exposure to cold, wet, frost, anything like that. And even if you can get an extra two or three weeks out of your plants, that little bit extra goes a long way. And then in my climate where I am, we have very, very wet winters. And for a lot of crops, that spells disaster when it comes to bacterial and fungal infections and diseases. So an environment like this gives you that protection against continuous moisture and wetness from both a root point of view and from a leaf perspective. And then another big one is pest control. In winter, obviously you have a lot of slug and snail issues. I have none of that in here because it's got a brick floor and we can control entrances and exits. And generally it's, it's quite a controlled environment. So we don't have any pest in issues in here in winter where out in the garden, I'll show you some of the spinach. Some of them have been absolutely decimated. And then seasons aside, what it allows me to do is grow more tropicals. I have two Arabica coffees in here, which out there in the elements, huge wind, very cold, wet winters, they're probably not going to do that well. Up in the high felt, they'll probably do better there. But this over here, the star fruit. If this star fruit was out in the open, it wouldn't be as luscious and as beautiful as this. I've got some ficuses, um, and then it allows you to grow more of the tropicals. I'm just testing these first to see how they do within this environment, going through a hot summer first. They have survived. So I'm going to bring more tropicals in here um, and experiment with things that I wouldn't normally be able to grow outdoors. So now let's look into how I converted my cardboard into a greenhouse. First of all, and most importantly, is I lived on the property for a full year without doing anything. I would say that is the most crucial thing you can do. What you're looking at is light exposure, sun, ex sun exposure, wind, pretty much everything to do with what could impact the growth, temperature, airflow of your environment. And then what I looked at doing is getting a list of all the parts that I was needing. If we look over here, I know that I needed to close this section up as a wall. So I needed windows or panels or pieces of wood. I then also knew that I needed roof panels to break through the traditional metal ones that were there in the first place. This whole roof was covered with the dark normal roof panels. And here you can see clear one. 60% clear, 60% blockage. And what that gives me is a lot more control over the exposure of light to my plants. Then crucially is, if we look at this one over here, go and visit the dump. So that's what I did. These are old school windows from a, obviously a school renovation project. I picked up at the dump for 30 Rand each. All the wood you see are pieces of scraps, leftovers, um, and then I know this needed to be closed. And then moving over to this side, I know that I needed this section closed off as well. So I got two pieces of plywood, closed that off. You can see we cut a hole in summer, that section comes out. And then we got beautiful airflow. Once again, from living here for a year, I knew where the wind flowed and blew so this is a hundred percent block out it allows a fair amount of airflow to come through you can still vaguely see through it but the air comes through so there's airflow and then in summer when it gets really hot we need to open there to get some proper airflow through 
then just in terms of enjoying the space that's all astroturf over here at the bottom same thing these are all off scraps and i'm not sure if you can see in the picture but they're all slightly different colors and textures so it's pretty much finding what you can and then using that to better the environment that you're in so in essence you need to live in the property for long enough to know what's going to work and what's not going to work you need to make a list of the parts that you need then go to the dump and see what you can find second hand and then make sure you experiment with the plants to see what works and what doesn't so as the wind is absolutely howling i think it reinforces why a greenhouse is sometimes a good environment to have but also just remember, there are some times when a greenhouse isn't a good option. And for me, a traditional greenhouse doesn't work because I find it doesn't have the flexibility that I needed. First of all, in terms of height, if you go the traditional rounded domed greenhouse, you're quite restricted in its height. I also like the square of a carport, what it gives you in that you can grow so much more and you've got so much more growing space. And very importantly for me is the ability to control airflow as much as possible. Now with a traditional greenhouse, you obviously get that, but you don't have as much control. For instance, in the carport I showed you, we know we need an airflow in a specific area, so we cut a piece out. To invest in a greenhouse, you need to make 100% sure you understand the sun, the airflow, all of that on your property so that you don't end up investing a huge amount in a greenhouse and you fry all your plants. Then secondly, it has to do with obviously the space. Using a traditional greenhouse takes up a lot of space. Within an urban environment, you probably don't have space, but you more than likely have a carport. If you can make that sacrifice, you can use no additional growing space, but get a huge amount in return. If you can make that slight sacrifice of not having your car under a carport. And then obviously we have the one when it comes to sustainability is, do you want to be buying all of that plastic which is going to have to be replaced every couple of years because greenhouses and the fabric that they use tend to degrade pretty quickly under the UV light of the sun. So there's obviously that whole portion of it as well, besides the cost. So for me, looking at what I had available, going to the dump, analyzing my needs, converting a carport or repurposing a carport into a greenhouse really made sense. Maybe it makes sense for you. Maybe this is the inspiration you needed to do something like this, which you might not have thought of before. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it out to your communities and networks. And let's all enjoy being sustainable together.